Hey, it's Sharon, and how many times have people told you, make more content, make more videos, make more posts? Well, no one tells you what happens next, right? Today, I talked to my friend, Craig Ballantyne, the most disciplined man in the world and the creator of the social story selling system. And he's going to talk to you about exactly how to turn content from your phone into cold, hard cash. That's right. How to turn content into cold, hard cash. We'll go into the exact strategies, the tactics, and even the specific scripts that you can use to turn your content into cold, hard cash. Get ready for a super tactical episode with my friend, Craig Ballantyne. One thing is for certain, just because it's tried and true doesn't mean it's working right now. So the big question is this, where can you learn what is working right now? The strategies, the tactics, the psychology, and the exact how to, how to grow your business, how to blow up your personal brand and supercharge your personal growth. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Sharon Srivatsa and welcome to Business School. So, uh, Craig, the underground circles of the world (laughs) call you the most disciplined man in the world. Now, my my question is this. uh, I'm worried that someday some Navy SEAL is going to come and punch me in the face and say, how dare you? So, I mean, I should almost like pre-frame it by saying uh, citizen and non-military, you know, whatever. But But, but anyways. But no, but here's the thing, though. Um, I know a lot of... I know a lot of active duty Navy SEALs. I know a lot of people that in SWAT, Army Rangers. I know a lot of amazing athletes. And I think that, I think that title fits you very well. Oh, thank you. Um, it, not only that, and I think it fits you very well because uh, for, for a couple of things. One, you have such insane clarity on what you want and what you want to do. And I think that's why you're able to do a lot of these things, right? Like you're able to say, this is what I do. This is who I am. Therefore, I'm able to go create this. Well, I uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And so I would say that the genesis of the whole world's most disciplined man thing, I'm not like the guy in the Da Vinci Code, you know, flagellating myself each night with a whip <laughs> or anything. It's It was a lot of people who were on my email list who were also entrepreneurs, and they said, this guy writes a lot, you know, and it's like, it's a great amount of content that he puts out, not only for um, a business coaching business, but also I was running the fitness business back then. They're like, that's a lot more content than I'm putting out as one person. He's putting out essentially like the content of three people. So it really was the world's most productive man. But in general, how do you get productive? Well, you probably have to be pretty disciplined, structured, regimented, whatever. And so then this, the world's most disciplined man, kind of took hold. But that's essentially what it is. It's output. The man is a machine in creation of stuff. Therefore, there must be something to learn here is is the overarching lesson for everybody listening. Yeah. So I think there's a precursor to that. And you've taught me this over and over. And you uh, and the concept of manufacturing celebrity, right? Mm -hmm. You you originally were, you had this uh, amazing fitness business. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you grew it and morphed it and you were on the cover of Men's Health Magazine. You had your videos have been watched millions of times and you manufactured celebrity. And then you, 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 you went into a new vertical, you manufactured celebrity again. And you've always told me, you're like, hey, Sharon, it's way easier to have impact, to sell, to create content, to actually touch people in the space if you have if you're famous, if you actually have celebrity, um, I'd love for you to talk about, you know, manufacturing celebrity a little bit. Is it a, is this, is it actually a process? Can anybody accomplish it? Is it only reserved for the elite few? How does that work? It is a great question. And when you think about it, almost every celebrity is manufactured. So here's a great example. The one that just pops into my mind. So you know, like the guy who landed the plane, Sully, right? You know, he yeah. landed this plane in the Hudson River and, you know, he deserves a mention for sure. I mean, that was, you know, he saved lives. Now, here's the thing is 
it could have he could have just went away, but somebody decided to continue manufacturing the celebrity around him. Bring in uh, you know Tom Hanks to be the guy who plays him in the movie, and so on and so forth. Now, but but again, there's other people who have done stuff like that where no one decided to manufacture any further celebrity. So if you go back to me, I was, you know, I grew up as I grew up not with nothing, but generally in nothing. You know, I grew up in Canada, first of all, Canada of all places, right? I grew up on a farm. I grew up with my father as an alcoholic. I grew up with my mother as a receptionist at a factory who, you know, made at most $25,000 Canadian, not American, mm-hmm. Canadian in a year. So really, if I could go then get a graduate degree in, in exercise physiology and somehow leapfrog into Men's Health Magazine, which then allowed me to become famous through association in a way, people knew my name, and then to go and film a bunch of videos and get them on YouTube early and then get a bunch of views and then sell a program. And then the more programs I sold, the more people recognize my name. So, you know, celebrity, micro celebrity, and then to switch the businesses. And, you know, basically we stopped that. I mean, we maybe make like a few hundred bucks, actually not a few hundred bucks. We have some recurring fitness stuff. So we make probably like five to 10 grand a month off that business. Still, I actually, I make almost a thousand dollars a week on YouTube from one video. And on ad roll, right? Like on yeah. playing ads. Yeah. And it's a video that's been being currently watched about 250,000 times a week during COVID because it's a bodyweight workout and it's being recommended. And it's now up to six and a half million views, the one video. So, you know, interesting. But that was all manufactured. I made the video, I uploaded it to YouTube. Like, you know, I didn't have any funding or any. You know, ABC, NBC, Fox News or anything behind me, manufactured it. Then I wrote the books, self-published them, promoted them to my email list, got on, I've probably done 375, maybe over 400 podcasts now. And, you know, one once you do one, you can get on two more from it because every podcaster knows two other podcasters that they'll have you. And so then speaking on stages, you know, it was me saying, hey, put me on your stage. And in some cases, in other cases, people were asking me. And then starting Instagram on February 15th, 2017, after not even having an iPhone until 2016, and then manufacturing the celebrity on Instagram to a higher level. And and so it's just me doing all this stuff, you know, with the help of team members and friends, but that's it. It's all manufactured. So, but it's all done with, there is the celebrity, there's a purpose behind it. Yeah, You're like, hey, definitely. I'm doing this for a very specific reason. There's intentionality in each post. It's not the, hey, I need to be on 17 platforms, so I'm just going to take one post and post it on the 17 platform. It's never been that way with you. It's always been very purposeful. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing this to get invited out for free coffees for people to pick my brain. I've got, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this for something slightly, slightly more impactful than that, but as an end result of it, for yeah. sure. But yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, let's figure out the platform. And you can look at, like Russell Brunson really describes it nicely in Traffic Secrets. Like Facebook is the talk show and Instagram is the reality show and YouTube is the sitcom. And yeah, that's pretty accurate. And, you know, yeah. LinkedIn would be like Bloomberg or CNBC yeah. or something like that. And you, you look at them that way and you go, okay, well then obviously the content's going to be slightly different. The style of video is going to be slightly different. I never liked Facebook. Like, I just don't like using it as a content platform. I never really got it. But Instagram came so naturally to me because it's really, you know, short, raw. And when I tried posting similar stuff on Facebook, it never really got the traction that Instagram was able to get the traction for me. Um, TikTok is interesting. You know, I watch a tiny, tiny bit of it every couple of weeks and starting to get the hang of it. And, you know, we put videos up there every single day. I film them, send them my guy. I've never logged into my own account yeah. there. And, you know, we've got a following there, but I'm not really sure how to make it into a business as much as JC. Maybe JC can share that with you when yeah. you chat with him. Yeah. Um, you said something very quickly, and I want to I wanna pivot on the TikTok, TikTok and Instagram stuff. But um, tactically speaking, uh, a lot of folks that are listening are either hosting a podcast and being guests on podcasts. And you said something very good. And you said, hey, listen, you're showing up on a podcast. You've done 350, 400 podcasts. And you're very intentionally wanting to get the word out, getting using the 
platform, the podcast as a platform to get the word out. So when, when you're talking to a podcast host, is there something that you intentionally ask, say, do to get the next intro? Or is this an organic thing where I say, Craig, that was so good. Let me introduce you. How does that work? It's generally at the end of it. And so why have I done so many podcasts first? And I go back to, I had a conversation with Dan Kennedy and Dan Kennedy said, that whenever he went on a teleseminar, which is different than a podcast, but you know, back in the day, teleseminars, whenever he went on a teleseminar, and usually it was for uh, the host customer list, he was able to sell about 100 books every time he did a teleseminar. And I, you know, just did the math. Okay, if I want to sell 10,000 books, if I go on 100 podcasts and I sell 100 books, 10,000 books, that's a lot, that's a, that's a good amount of books. And so I started doing them all. And at the end, the interviewer generally says to you, hey, is there anything I can do for you? And you could, you know, sometimes they say, hey, I have a friend who has a podcast. Would you like to do it? But generally they say, what can I do for you? After the show is done, you know, this is not recorded. And you say, well, you know what? Why don't you introduce me to your friends who have podcasts and I'll jump on those shows too. I'd love to, I'd love to be on those shows. And then it's like, you know, one becomes two, two becomes four, and it's exponential yeah. from there. And, and the next thing you know, you, you have to start turning them down based right. on how many listeners do you have on the show. Right, right, right. That's, um, I think that a lot of times, right, um, the, the, av- the, the average person goes on the show, does the show, thank you so much. And someone says, well, what can I do? You're like, oh, thank you so much for having me. And they just bounce yeah. when the person really wants to help. And yeah. so at that point, there is a, I talked to Bedros about this. There's a karmic balance. And I, and I don't, I mean that in a very positive way, right? If there's a karmic balance, a person wants to help. There's a, there's a gratitude component there. So the ask becomes important. And when you ask, how you ask it, make it thoughtful. But it makes sense, especially if they can naturally further your mission. It just totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, totally. I, mean, I, I love Bedros' whole story of do like he, it's funny. He did the, almost the same number of podcasts, but he did them before his book came out. I did the same number of podcasts after my book came out. And it's, you know, obviously there's a slightly different result when you do it before, because then you can get people wrangled up into a book launch. Yeah. But, you know, I'm an impatient person and my <laughs> book was, was self-published as opposed to his, which went through Ben Bella. And therefore it was like, well, you know, if I do a book launch, it doesn't end up on any list anyways. So why do a launch? And it's just, let's just get this book out uh, and get people hearing about it. And then that leads to other things because, you know, sometimes I do a podcast and at the end I'd say, you you should really do my coaching. And then, you know, th- they become a client and then they get me speaking on their uh, stage and then I get clients from speaking on their stage. And so you just have to like figure out where do you feel like you rate in this person's eyes? Like, if, you know, if I'm on, Lewis's house podcast. I'm not going to pitch him on coaching or something like that, but it'd be like, you know, if you could get me in with, uh, I don't know the names of the people that he associates with. I forget them, but like the Hollis, you know, like yeah. Rachel and Rachel Dave Hollis, Hollis. Yeah. he probably knows them. Right. So, you know, Hey, if you could nudge or, you know, actually what I often asked was, Hey, I'd love like, I'd love to get connected with somebody. Like, so I was on this one guy's podcast and he knows Amy Porterfield. I'm like, you know what, why don't, um, why don't you find out her shipping address and then we'll ship one of my perfect day kits to her as a gift from you. Yeah. Okay. Well then great. So, so, you know, you can just tell the address to the shipping company so that like, you know, so you're not sharing her shipping address with me. We, you know, I don't need it, but what, you know, we just want to give a gift to her and we get, in, we get in front of her. And to be honest with you, that hasn't turned into anything, but we yeah. did it. Right. And, you know, maybe it will, t- maybe one day we'll meet at an event and she'll go, oh, you know, I've had your thing for years and just never got around to get in touch with you. Well, oh, you know, whatever, but it's just goodwill. And the great thing about, you know, Bedros and his position, me and my position, you and your position is there's no rush on us, you know, getting a return on a introduction, you know, an ROI return on introduction. Like for you and I, it's like, well, you know what, if this takes 10 years to turn into even a hello, it's no big deal. You know, we just want to give and I've got all these books. Like I didn't write the books not to be read, you know, (laughs) I I wrote the books so that every single person could get some takeaway from it where it made a big difference to them. So that's what I'm all about is, 
I just want to get the books in the hands of as many people as possible. So that's sometimes I ask for that. Or sometimes I, sometimes, you know, one time I recently did one, you know, Nick and Tom, uh, these Canadian real estate investing guys. No. Okay. So they're up near Toronto and they have a Greek last name. I can't, it starts with a K Costas, uh, something like that. Yeah. Anyways, I've been on their show. They're really big in Southwestern Ontario. They help, you know, working people buy their first rental homes and stuff like that. And so at the end of it, I said, well, hey, you know what? Why don't you guys, you know, you love my book. Why don't you guys buy a copy for all of your VIP members? You know, we can get them down to like five bucks a book. Like that's literally, we make no money on it. And, you know, I'd love to get this book in the hands of it. Because if I get my hands in, you know, 200 plus people's investors hands i mean these are legitimate serious people you know that leads to opportunities even if it's just great conversations with people yeah. and and then you kind of snowball from there so those are the kind of asks that you make you just have to be strategic you have to know where you are in the pecking order and make the appropriate ask but once you get on a couple of podcasts you you, you can never get off that that uh, merry-go-round because yeah. everybody's got one now yeah, I'll say the one last thing here. Just just for for if you're listening right now, a couple a couple of great takeaways, right? Number one, um, make that make that soft, considerate ask. I think it's totally fine to do that. Just be thoughtful about it. And number two, I, Craig, I, I you you know, I have no idea how many how many perfect day formulas and perfect week formulas I've bought, right? Like every time we do, I'm like, Hey, I got a new mastermind group. No, no, no. But like, you know, I got a new mastermind group. I have a gift. Great. And it's so easy because I talk to your team. I give them a list. They bill me, they ship the books out with whatever note I want on it. Right. And it's so great because I get to do that. And what people don't realize, and I'll give you the, I'll give you the pro tip here for folks that are listening of not, if you want to, what you guys should do is go, you should contact, DMs, uh, DM Craig, contact his team so he you can buy a, uh, a mass, a book, a, a set of books for your uh, staff, your mastermind groups, you know, 100, 200 people. And then uh, the pitch is always to Craig. After I've gotten the books and they're ready to get delivered, I'll say, hey, Craig, can you do me a quick favor? Here's the, here's the type of people. There's 200 of them in our, in our Facebook group. Can you record me like a 60, 90 second video that just introduces... Uh, the book and the and as a thankfulness saying, hey, this is what you should watch for. And you know what? Craig is like, this is awesome. He's happy to record a video. He sends it to you. Now you launch the book and the gift with Craig's message. Now there is manufacturing celebrity, celebrity. There's proximity to the author. Now that feels like there's connection. I think people just buy the books and forget. I as an author, you as an author, are like this is amazing. Like I would gladly do that video to further the message of the book. Yeah. And then, you know, some, some people like your friends, Don and Penny, you know, they're, they bought a bunch of books and they're giving them away. So people feel really awesome. Like, Oh, I want a book, you know, because you know, they're friends with Craig and stuff like that. So you can always do that too. There's a whole bunch of ways that you can do it. Yeah. While we're on the book topic, I don't know if you know this, I'll tell you the last story here and then uh, we'll get into tactical stuff. I was reading Seth Godin's, this is marketing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm a big Seth Godin fan. I love love what he writes. He write, uh, and I read it. And I was like, oh, this would be a really great book for my mastermind group. So I bought 100 copies for my mastermind group. And while I was reading the book, Craig, I was like, oh, I wonder what uh, Seth would say about this. I wonder what he... So I wrote some questions in the book. And after I bought the 100 copies, I actually sent an email to Seth. Hey, Seth, I bought 100 copies for my mastermind group. Thank you so much. Hey, I have three to five questions. If you're okay with it, I'm happy to either send it to you, but it may be even more powerful if you just, if we could just do a 10 to 15 minute video interview just for the members of my mastermind group. And he was like, that's a really great ask. I'm happy to do that. You don't need to send me the questions in advance. I send him a Zoom link. We do a 15 minute interview. Now my mastermind group got a, a book from Seth and a video interview just for them, which was so cool to do. Yeah, it's so simple, man. It's so simple to to deliver these types of experiences now more than ever. That's for sure. Yeah, I want to I want to go to one thing that you just you 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 kind of glossed over a little bit, a little fast when you said, "Hey, I jumped on." I'm Instagram is kind of my thing. I was a BlackBerry guy. You and I, you know, you and I kind of enjoy that. Where I, often you'll pull out your BlackBerry and show oh, it to oh, me. Go get it. Hold on. <laughs> uh, but the cool part is, I. You were never big on it. Oh, there it is. The BlackBerry, oh, for those of you who can't see this work. on the podcast. Uh, but 
you told me, I think this was either a time when you and I had just gotten together for dinner and you were on a, on a, in an Uber on the way to, I think San Diego. And you were like, Hey man, I made $5,000 in the back of an Uber. And was that the time you started to actually kind of believe in the power of what the platform could do? Well, it was definitely when I made that first sale. Uh, I've probably done it a few times. The very first time I did it was in April of 2017. So two months after I had been on Instagram, I had 500 followers and I sold something in five minutes to someone for $5,000. Now there was obviously a little bit of a relationship existed before, but they didn't know about the stuff that I was doing. They didn't know that they could you know, get this level of coaching from me until I made the Instagram post. And once I had done that, then it was just a matter of quick conversation, sending them the link, and they were obviously very warmed up, but I've done other sales with complete strangers to me. Maybe that they weren't strangers to, to me, but that I was a stranger. They were a stranger to me. I wasn't a stranger to them. And, you know, in the backseat of an Uber or sitting, you know, I did one the other day. I was out in front of the grocery store. You know, I had one hand holding my dog leash and the other hand, you know, with one, you know, just the thumb, not even any other fingers, just one thumb sold $2,500 coaching program standing in front of the grocery store waiting for my girlfriend to come back out. And I looked like an idiot, right? I looked like an idiot on the side of the street just doing this. You even posted a photo about it. I yeah, that's right. I made a video of it because I was like such a dork. And, and you know, that's the great thing about like just figuring this out. You can have these conversations anytime, anywhere. So it doesn't matter if you're selling a house, doesn't matter if you're selling books, courses, coaching, personal training, it is very, very simple to, to do this because Instagram is raw, it's personal. And when people show me their Instagram and it's a logo as their profile picture, I'm like, you, are, you have immediately failed Instagram. That's for sure. Yeah, I remember you telling me this. Um, you said to me, you're like, hey, Sharon, you heard it from me first. Instagram is the new email. And I was like, what is he talking about? And that's when you started explaining to me, hey, you remember the you know, four years ago when email was the personal vehicle, this is the personal vehicle now. And you've actually almost taken parts of email and, and how people are comfortable with email and applied a lot of those principles to how they, how they kind of work with Instagram. Um, can you talk a little bit about kind of why do you think Instagram is like email and how is that integrating into people's lives? Excellent question. So with Instagram, you can make stories. And that's where I really found the most overlap with email. So your main feed is, is kind of like a, a blog where people come and they find you. And then they kind of sign up to follow you. And then they get into your stories, which is kind of like having an email. And you make these little stories that follow an email format, which is headline, right? Subject line for email. If you, if you mess up your subject line in email where it just says, you know, Joe, the real estate agent, newsletter 157, like nobody's, nobody's really excited to open that. But if it says, you know, how to sell your house for 20% over asking, even if you don't stage it, you're like, what? Let me open that. And so, you know, you, you do that sort of thing. Now you can do the exact same thing in a story. Like, hey, just finishing up a sale here and walking out, we sold it for 20% over asking and we didn't even stage it. In fact, you know, we did it in seven days and I only went to this place once. Wait a minute, you're probably wondering how the heck did I do that and how can I do this for your home? Well, let's go on. And then so that, like, that's like kind of the first video slide. They're about 15 seconds long. Then you go in, you tell a little personal story, teach a little piece of content where it's actually valuable to somebody. And then... I say you've earned the right to make a call to action. And that's exactly what I did with my email marketing for so many years. Ryan Dice did it for so many years, Frank Kern, Vedros, uh, Matt Fury was probably one of the original guys doing this all the way back in 2000 when he was the king of email. And it was just compelling subject line, personal story, give a nugget, and then tell them what to do next, which was usually buy something uh, via a link. Well, that's exactly what we do with the stories on Instagram. We make video versions of it. You can also do text versions of it, um, but it's just simply get people to go through a little message where they feel like, wow, this person knows what they're talking about. And then you tell them exactly what to do next and why they need to do it now. And it's the exact same thing as email. So that's, 
I discovered that also when I was in, I was in Florida when I made my first sale for the 5,000. I was also in Florida, this time in Orlando. I was in the airport walking around and it just hit me. It's like, oh, these stories that I'm watching, I understand now that it's really can be analogous to email. And that's when I started doing it. And very few people were doing anything like it. And so I started selling stuff through stories and taught a whole bunch of people. And now, you know, I get people who buy my course. We got one yesterday. So some guy bought the course and overnight, you know, he made a message and the next day he made $3,000. He sold a bunch of coaching and we get those all the time. 3,000 is a lot, but usually we get, you know, $1,000 in 48 hours, $1,000 in 24 hours. Because one of the things that's missing, Sharon, for most people's social media is a, what the heck do you actually do? Yeah, I yeah. still don't know that. I've been following you. You got cool pictures, but I don't know what the heck you do. And how can I do business with you? And we just told, we just taught people to be, you know, quote unquote, blunt by describing it. And like, oh, that's what you do? Cool. I'm interested. I'm going to hire you. Okay. If you, like, <laughs> it's not rocket surgery. It's just that you have done, you have made all these posts. And at the end of the day, no one knows how to do business with you. Yeah. 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 So, so I have a more kind of psychological, philosophical question for you. I, I, I meet folks that are of two extremes generally when they approach social media, when it comes to selling. And you have one camp of folks that are like, hey, I, I can sell all day on social. I'm happy to go on social. I'm happy to tell people to buy my stuff. And then on the other hand, you have people are like, well, it's social media. I, I don't want to, should I sell? Should I not sell? I'm kind of, I don't, I don't feel good about selling. I have my friends on this channel as well. I have some family members, my aunts on, on Facebook, my aunts, you know, you've got that feeling when, when someone is in the, if there are one or I think both extremes are tough, right? Like you have the, even the person that is totally cool with selling kind of goes overboard sometimes. Um, how do well, you I would of- rather do this. And, and, and so, you know, everybody can picture riding a horse, right? I would rather pull the reins in on the horse than have to whip the horse over yeah. and over and over again to get them to do anything, which is that person who won't sell because of the 17,009 reasons why right. they can't sell today. That's a tough person to deal with, man. I'd much rather say, nah, let's pull it back a bit and you'll still be good. But why do you, so why do you, do you think, have you seen a a specific reason or a mindset or something that can unlock people's, uh, you know, kind of hesitation for wanting to invite a sale? Do you think it's scripting? Do you think it's the process? What is it that makes them feel uncomfortable to ask for the next step? I do think scripting is helpful when you do that. And we can talk about that in a second. But the analogy I like to use is I, I always say the Cosby show. I shouldn't say the Cosby show. It's like kind of got a bad name now, but yeah. uh, let's say cheers, right? So cheers, you know, I grew up watching cheers and, and any, or Roseanne, you know, anybody or friends, you know, sitcom, right? Right. Every sitcom followed a formula of 22 minutes of content and seven to eight minutes of commercials. It was that for every single show. Seinfeld, another one, right? And so I just look at it, it's like, hey, you know what? We didn't, sometimes we didn't love the commercials. Sometimes we did love the commercials, but that was a fair trade, right? 22 minutes of Seinfeld for eight minutes of commercials. We made that trade for a decade, right? So obviously we were okay with making that trade. So it's the same trade you make on your social media yeah. or as I call it business media. Cause if you're there for social media, you should, you should find some more social stuff for your life. Uh, but business media approach. Okay. I'm going to give, 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 give. And then I'm going to say, Hey, let's do business. Here's how to do it. You know, Gary V has the book jab, 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 right hook or whatever it is. And I think that's fair. Give, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you great. So so I have now on my Instagram moved to this basically like a written advertisement on my main feed. And we call it a blunt post. And I just I put one up today. I'm looking at it right now. It says it's just a black text on a white background. It's got a picture of me that looks like it came from Twitter. And so it looks like a Twitter post, and it just says, 
I am looking for three business owners who want to make seven figures in 2020. Then it says the next line, I'll personally coach you to scale your business and achieve financial freedom without working more. DM me seven figures to see if you qualify. Okay. So, so that's it. That's the post. Okay. And I actually get half the number of likes on it as I do like a really valuable post. Like a really, like, like what? I'm, I'm shocked at how many people like it and some people comment on it. And, and I, t- I just tell people to send me a DM. It's my commercial break in amongst, I mean, every day I make at least one, if not two Instagram TV videos that are three minutes long. And we do quote posts and we do my podcasts up there. And we do some of these carousel posts, which are 10 pictures in one post. We do all types of great content. And I'm, now I'm going to serve you up an advertisement. Yeah. But even then, if people read the description, it's actually pretty valuable. So it's almost like 22 minutes of, of comedy followed with seven minutes of infomercial. And infomercials are entertaining on its own. Yeah. So it's not like a boring commercial. Or it's a Geico commercial, which are pretty entertaining. Or a Budweiser one or whatever. So it, and, it, and it's so blunt like if you've never told people what you do on Instagram, you're going to get dozens, if not hundreds of direct messages because people are like, oh, I didn't know that you sold this. I didn't know that you did that. Yeah. We had one guy who runs a jewelry store down in, in the Diamond District in New York. And the very first time he made a story, he sold a $20,000 ring or oh, necklace man. or something because the person who bought it said, I didn't know that you ran a jewelry store. That's crazy. It is. It is so bananas. And so you can customize this for any marketplace, right? I'm looking for three homeowners who want to sell their house in the next 90 days. I'll personally guide you to staging your house in the absolute best way so that you get more people to your open house. DM me, sell my home to see if you qualify. So simple. And I realized this the other day, Sharon, that if anybody knows anything about copywriting, there's a classic formula called ADA, A-I-D-A. Uh-huh. And this blunt post in probably 35 words covers all of it. It's attention. I'm looking for. So it calls you out, gets your attention. Then interest. You want to make seven figures in 2020 or you want to sell your home in the next 90 days for above asking? Oh, I'm interested in that. Then desire. You're going to desire that I personally coach you or I personally guide you. And then the last one is action. So it's attention, interest, desire, and action. And the last one just says, DM me this code word. That's the next step. It's yeah. all of, it's an entire sales letter in a 50 word Instagram post. You know, I love that because I, I want to, I want to dispel this myth of sell, 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 because there is a, what you did there was you basically told them exactly who you are, exactly what you do. You gave them the promise and then you just invited them. It was, you didn't tell everybody else bug off. You just said, Hey, if you are interested in this, you know, I'm inviting you to DM me. I'm giving you a very simple next step and you're not, and uh, th- there is a, there's a something very specific here. You didn't just say, cause I, you know, you see a insurance broker or you see a real estate agent or you see a coach or a consultant, they'll say, Hey, I work with pro athletes to get them six pack abs, text me at this number. And now it's weird or call me, which is the worst. Like most service providers will say, call me. And I always tell people, okay, so I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to dial your number and be like, Oh, hi, is this Craig? Um, Craig, you don't know me, but, um, I'm, a um, I, I don't know. I was trolling you on Instagram. I have nothing to say. Like, it's yeah, so right. weird. You're making it so awkward for me to actually take the next step. But instead, when you can say, hey, DM me the word seven figures and I'll get you all the details. DM me the word seven figures to see if you qualify. You're giving me exactly what to do. So it's not just a, I've actually seen bus benches that says, call me with the phone number. Like someone's going to stop and call. Like, that's crazy. What a wasted speed of real estate, right? And if you can just give people a, a very simple, easy next step, they'll take it. Yeah, that's why, think- that's why a lot of you know, advertising things say text whatever to this number. And now, now I've got your phone number. You didn't have to pick up the phone because everyone hates picking up the phone. I mean, you had to pick up the phone to text, but you didn't have to pick up the phone to call somebody. Right. And it's like, it's so easy. And, yeah. and you get to track this, right? So if you do a different word in each one of these things, 
or if you would do a different word in your stories, you do a different word in your story highlights, you do a different word in your profile, where a lot of people screw up their profiles too. It's horrible. Um, you know, just like you, you don't tell people what you do in your profile or you, you know, a lot of people, if they have a whole bunch of other accounts, they'll, they'll put their other account in their profile. Well, oh, what do you think daisy, someone's going to do? They'll just daisy chain profiles and just go and right, say, okay, I'm off to the other one. Or you like send them to, you send them to, to your YouTube channel. Well, what was the point of that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, you said, uh, you said something which is, which is great, which is great. I want to make sure people understand. A lot of times people ask me, Sharon, well, how does creating content, how does creating content help me make sales? <laughs> and, 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 you know, like the more, and I think you just laid it out there. You're like, Hey, listen, whenever, if you ever have a thought that and you're ever thinking, how does creating content help me make sales? You should think about friends, cheers, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes, you created 22 minutes of entertaining content. Now you have eight minutes of permission to have the advertisement, to ask, to sell, to invite them to do things. So that way, don't be overly focused on, oh my gosh, I'm creating this piece of content and every piece of content I have, I need to create a call to action. Like you don't need to do that. And I think that's what I got from that, Craig, where you can actually be free in your 22 minutes of content creation, if you will, if you are very disciplined on the on the advertisement. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is just, you know, in a, if you're an expert in whatever it is that you do, you should be able to create content, snap of your fingers, super easy and be able to whip. I call it the whip it out challenge. Uh, you know, I made this video the other day, whip out your phone and make a video 90 seconds or less, getting people excited, teaching them something that they don't know. And then telling them like, Hey, I have space for three more um, home sales in my real estate roster. Uh, I need you to send, if you're interested in selling your home for above asking, send me a direct message right now, but please hurry. I have over 5,000 followers and these three spots are going to go really, really fast. So send me that DM today and just say, sell home. Dude, that's so awesome. And, and, but, but, but Craig, you've talked to folks that um, are creating content in various niches. Yeah. Why is, why is content creation daunting generally for people? Why is it, is there a, why is there a philosophical roadblock to that? So everybody knows of the imposter syndrome, right? The imposter syndrome is, Oh, I'm not good enough. Well, here's the thing is you don't actually have imposter syndrome. You have expert syndrome and expert syndrome is this, that you don't realize that you have forgotten more than 90% of people will ever know. So you've been, you know, like, for example, I have a lot of nutrition folks, you know, nutrition coaches, and they won't make videos or something because to them, like mixing protein and fats at every meal, like, duh, who wouldn't do that? That's so obvious because you've been reading articles on that since 2000 and you think it's common knowledge, but most people don't even know what a protein is. They're like, is there, is it like protein, like bread's a protein, right? No, no. It's like, I, I actually, when I used to teach um, personal training back in, when I was still in undergrad, I taught personal training in 1998. I had a medical doctor. So some, well, now he wasn't a medical doctor yet, but he was in second or third year of medical school in my session. And he was like, yeah, so like, is like is like peanut butter or not you know it's like a really stupid question about like was is there protein in carbohydrates i'm like what that is the stupidest question ever let alone from a medical doctor so you don't make videos because you think that what you know everybody knows yeah so yeah. like you're so you're like i don't know what to say because and, and then you get into your head like there's all these other people saying it and i'm just yeah. going to be lost in the noise no you're not no you're not you're not because another thing that I've learned is that most people are terrified of making a video. So the fact that you make a video immediately elevates your celebrity because people are like, oh my God, I saw you made a video. That's amazing. How did you do that? Well, I'm actually able to hold a phone and talk at the same time. It's just, you know, I know it's, I know, I obviously I went to Stanford uh, in order to be able to do this. And so, and, and then, you know, you published it without the fear of criticism. So you are now a celebrity in a lot of people's eyes simply because you have shown up. Now, if you show up consistently, 
they immediately think that you are smarter than them. Oh, it's, it's like well, the same thing as when, as soon as you step on stage at an event, the thing is, what do most beginner speakers think when they step on stage at an event? I'm so nervous. Is anybody going to listen to me? And everybody in the audience is like, I didn't come here to like not listen to you. That's why I'm here. I am here to listen to you. You are an expert. You're, you're standing three feet above me. So clearly you must be more intelligent. Right. Than me. So, so it's funny, like the, it's all, it's not adversarial, but it's the speaker, the beginner speaker and the audience have completely different views on what's happening. The speaker, the beginner speaker, the beginner video content maker is terrified. And the people on the other side think they are in the presence of greatness. They automatically mm -hmm. default to that. Yeah. So, you, so if you're not making content, it's only because of what's going on in your own head. So, so I teach people, I say to them, let's just come up with the three to five things that are your core beliefs. And if they could be different than what most other people say, then we're really on the road to success. I call these like, you know, I, I created this five by five grid, you know, here are your five main beliefs here, are five different ways to tell the story here. Yeah. Therefore you have 25 different pieces of content and you can go and do it. Now, the, now there's one caveat there with the expert syndrome is that too many experts who do make content, you know, if their level, if the level of understanding of the audience is at a two, most experts are speaking at a seven yeah. and you know, it's like, talking about organic grass fed butter to somebody who's eating pizza and soda every day. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a mismatch and you end up not having content that connects. Yeah. The, you know, the crazy part is, um, I, my, over the last year, and I think I shared this on, on your stage as well, when people are getting started, especially the experts, right? If you're a coach, a consultant, a real estate agent, a insurance broker, et cetera, anytime that people hire us to do a complex task because they're outsourcing the complexity of that transaction or that result. Uh, I always tell people the, the number of questions that exist in that are so many. And I said, you never have to create new content ever. I just, just go into your email and look at the last question that you got asked and then just start a video and say, Hey, today's the, Today's question of the day comes from Craig Valentine in Vancouver, Canada. Craig asks, you know, what is earnest money? Well, Craig, there's three, three ways to think about earnest money. One, two, three, four. By the way, I just worked on it with a client right now and I have an opening for one more person to do this. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in Vancouver, message me the word Vancouver below and I'll get you all the details. The stuff is like, you do this all day. You just answer the questions that people have already asked you, right? And like, I, I tell them, just go to your, you don't even have to make stuff up. You responded to the client anyway. You already wrote the out, you already wrote out the answer. You don't even have to make anything up. Just read your email if that's the worst thing, but you have everything done. And I, I, daily, I'd say, you know, for if you are a coach, a consultant, a real estate agent, an insurance broker, anybody that is in, a, in the, you know, kind of in, in the expert knowledge delivery mechanism business, you literally should be doing, in my opinion, you should be doing a question of the day. Because now, and Craig, you taught me this, you're like, dude, why are you building something that you can't reference later. So now when someone else asks the questions, you can say, oh, Sharon, I'm super glad that you asked that question. In fact, I just recorded that here. Here's the link to that. Now you don't have to record that all over again either. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're on, wait, wait a minute. People are emailing you questions. You must be a celebrity. Therefore, <laughs> I can trust you. That's so awesome. Uh, so Craig, I want to go back to kind of the most productive man, the most disciplined okay. man conversation for a second mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to content. And everyone's like, hey, Craig, it's easy for you. You've been doing this. You can write. You're a great writer. You can think you can put stuff up. You've got a team. I have a full-time job. I still have to run my business. And you've heard this. You shared with your private clients recently. You actually shared your full schedule. You're like, here's what I do. Oh, yeah. You actually like walk through that. And it was really real. It was like, hey, I wake up at this time. This is what I do. You gave yourself really great buckets of time to drive results. And I'd love if you wouldn't mind just sharing, hey, this is what my day generally looks like. So people can get a sense of this is how I, this is how I, Craig, work. Yeah. Well, uh, let me tell the full story because I didn't tell the full story in the email that you got. But, you know, it, this is to show people that I'm human. So, so I, I met my girlfriend, Michelle, in November of uh, last year. So about six months ago at the time of recording this call. And 
I'm living in Toronto. So I'm, I ended up staying up. And I was living in Toronto then. So I was, you know, staying up until 11 o'clock at night talking to her. And so I actually started sleeping a little bit later. And then, you know, I moved out here to the West Coast in March. And I thought that I was going to have to change my schedule, get up later. But fortunately, you know, Michelle goes to bed at the same time I do, which then permits me to get up really early. So I went through a phase of about four months when I wasn't sticking to this schedule and I was getting up a little bit later and working a little bit later at night. So, but I just adapted to it. So the current schedule is now back to my normal schedule, which I profiled in the perfect day formula. So it's back to literally getting up at three before 3.57 a.m. Usually I'm up before then. Some days the alarm goes off, but most of the time I'm up before then. And ignore what time I get up, okay? It's not about the hour that you get up. It's about what you do with the hours that you are up. I love the morning. I have a meeting with my team at 7 a.m. Pacific time. So I have to prepare for the meeting. It's a marketing meeting. All my, mem- all my team members are on the East Coast at 10 o'clock, but we have to get the ads up on Facebook as early as possible. So therefore, what option do I have? Um, and so I get up at 3.57, I write. Uh, well, actually, what I do now is I take the dog out and then I do a five minute, maybe sometimes 10 minute meditation. And then I write. And then I will, have, you know, after I've done my, what I call non-urgent important work, my writing, I then will reward myself with a check of social media to check my DMs to get the sales conversation started there. I will go to our sales tracking document, move, drum up some business is what I like to say. We always want to drum up business early in the day. That should be a priority for every entrepreneur. So we're pushing follow-up messages. I'm thinking about what videos I can create if I have to write any sales scripts. And then I have to come up with Facebook ad ideas for our 7 o'clock meeting. We meet at 7. At 7.30, my dog is going bananas. So we go outside. Uh, there's fortunately an amazing park right beside us, which actually isn't a dog park. And so we get um, you know these, these guys, the mall cops show up on bikes every morning and like, this is not an off-leash dog park. And like, Oh, actually, like just before this, I was working out outside and I was doing bodyweight rows on a piece of playground equipment that had yellow caution tape wrapped around it. And so a city worker came over to me and said, hey, that, you can't do this. And I'm like, what is it going to, is it broken? Is it going to fall down on me? He goes, no, COVID, man, can't use this. And so I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I don't know. Is it against the law for me to do what I was doing? I don't know. Anyway, so we, we, uh, the dog plays and the dog plays so hard that it just is passed out for nine hours after that, which we have to do. And then um, I spend time with Michelle working on her business for half an hour. And then we read for half an hour, which is new because I used to read before bed when I lived in Toronto, but now I don't hear. And so we read in the morning and I'm going through traffic secrets right now. And I actually just bought um, Ramit Sethi's book. Yeah, I will good. teach you to be rich. I've never read it before. And awesome. I was like, I want to go see what it's all about. I mean, it is a encyclopedia of knowledge for the average person who, you know, has to, you know, get rich on $60,000 a year. I mean, it's an incredible book. And so I'm learning a lot from it, both in style and substance. And then after that, I go and write again, and then I work out. And then in the afternoon, I do stuff like this. Yeah. You actually showed, there was never a time where you said, dude, I spent 14 hours creating content. Those were the rewarded pieces of time. And it's not a, you slot the content creation in during the day as opposed to, because you've, you've gotten so natural with creating it. It's not a burden and daunting task anymore. No, so, so there's a couple of ways that we create the content. One, I create content when I'm at the dog park. Um, so I can create TikTok videos, some Instagram videos, stuff like that. Um, and then whenever I go outside to work out, all my workouts are outside. I will do a three minute video. Um, after the workout, sometimes before the workout, I'm very fortunate. We live right on the water with a great view. So I'll just, you know, I just get fired up, you know, often by a question somebody's asked me and I just run out and I, uh, to the balcony, if I'm in the house or when I'm outside working out, I'll just whip out the phone and do the video. And that's all you really need to do, except for once a month, we get a videographer to come into the condo and we are prepared in advance and I film four to eight YouTube videos and a bunch of, well, you know, if I have to film any sales videos or whatever, 
And it's like, okay, you've got some work to do. And he goes and edits the stuff and gets it to my team and my team distributes it. Now, you don't need a team. I mean, my team is a 21-year-old kid. So you got a high school kid in your life, great. The high school kid's going to be able to distribute the content across platforms, put it on YouTube, edit the video. You, you just can't do any of that. So if you start to edit a video, I've just slapped your hand. You can't do it anymore. And so that's how I create content. You know, very short snippets on, you know, the drop of a hat and then also planned as well. Yeah. Um, for those that are listening, I, I have bought, um, we can't, we can't go into all of the ninja tactics here that Craig likes to use, including the DM sales scripts that get you the conversion based conversation. So we bought, I bought that for, um, my mastermind groups to have the, the social story selling system that you have, Craig, yeah. uh, make sure we link it up here so that you can, you guys can get it. It's a, it's a no brainer. If you're spending time on Instagram and you're actually using conversations to create conversion and you should totally have the right tools so that you know exactly what to say so you can move the conversation forward. But Craig, what, um, if you had your choice and you wanted people to go somewhere where they can learn more about Craig, learn more about your message and get kind of a deeper dive into what you're working on, what's the best place for them to go? Instagram, real Craig Valentine, go and find me on Instagram. Um, if you need help with your time, go and get perfectweekformula.com. That's my newest book, my best book. And then you can also go to IG salessystem.com, get the Instagram course that Sharon talked about. And then also you can email me because I like email. I like email a lot. And you can email me at Craig at godfather.com and give me some material for my content. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, for just as a thank you, when you guys are listening to this, jump on Craig's DM, send him a quick DM and say, Hey, Heard you and Sharon on the podcast. That was awesome. That way Craig has some context as to where uh, he actually connected with you and he knows uh, you all. DM me the word Sharon podcast. Oh my gosh. Just DM him the word Sharon. He like, you know, he'd be like, he, you'll get a bunch of hearts and likes. That yeah, itself yeah, yeah, exactly. that itself will happen. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, Craig, man, you've been um, just an amazing friend and mentor to me ever since the first day we met. And uh, I can't thank you enough for being on dropping nuggets and always just uh, sharing and serving every single day. I appreciate you very much. You are in beast mode all the time and an inspiration to me daily, sir. Hey, Sharon, I have a cool gift for you. I took some of my best ideas from the last 20 years and created a five-day MBA. It's quick and action-packed that you can listen to on the go, just like this podcast. And I wanna give it to you for free, just as a thank you for listening to the show. No fluff, no gimmicks, just pure actionable ideas for you to use instantly. You can grab it right now at businessschoolshow.com. That's businessschoolshow.com.